Well, folks, we're going to be talking about some new information, screenshots, images, other stuff, details for the Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Because, folks, it is a brand new Zelda game dropping on September 26th. You guys are seeing the trailer right now. Looks absolutely incredible. But today, you guys know we'd like to bring you and keep you as up to date on Zelda games as we possibly can. So there's been some new information and some new details pointed out, some official imagery and box art and all this stuff dropped by Nintendo themselves. So we're going to go through all of this stuff. We're going to start with the screenshots and the images, official art, all of that. Then we'll get to some other details in between. First off, though, let's start with this very, very first screenshot here. Again, all of this comes directly from Nintendo's press website. And you're seeing here, hey, this is that money shot they showed in the trailer, that sort of Breath of the Wild moment. You know, you walk to the cliff, you overlook Hyrule. Pretty interesting. Obviously, you see Death Mountain over there. You see uh, the water and the other hills that lead to a snowy area and what we assume is Hyrule Castle and all of the rest. We'll get back to this shot in a little bit because there's actually something that this shot does essentially confirm, but uh, we'll get to it a bit later. Next, we got to go to this next screenshot. This is something we saw in the trailer. Uh, Zelda running away. This seems to be towards the beginning after Link falls through those rifts or whatever they're calling them. Uh, she's running away so she doesn't get sucked up in it. Uh, here's one of those rifts that exists just out in the world. Uh, you're seeing one of the characters fall through the rift. I don't know if this is from a cutscene or what it is. We don't know the names of these characters yet either, but definitely really interesting. And man, I, I just love this art style. I know it was really great in Link's Awakening, but I'm so glad it's being used again in a brand new Zelda game. Here we see another shot at the beginning with Link about to fall through the rift. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Also, the note about Zelda in the crystal at the top. The only other time I remember Zelda being in a crystal like that is Ocarina of Time. So is this the game that begins the Fallen timeline, you know, where Link fails? I don't know. I'm just... Just throwing that out there. You ever see Zelda with her new staff and her companion uh, looking pretty clean, pretty nice. I'm liking the vibes here. Uh, here we see another uh, rift. This presumably is in Hyrule Castle Town just based on the fountain and uh, things we know from prior Zelda games. Uh, pretty interesting. that It's just kind of this thing slapped on top. I don't really know how we close these things, uh, but hey. I'm very interested to find out how we're able to take care of that. Some characters there we see. Obviously, they have that motion blur effect going around. They had that in Link's Awakening as well. Might just be part of the engine where everything's kind of focused on the center of your screen. Uh, here we see a Deku scrub or Deku, you know, just present in general here. I shouldn't say scrub, but whatever. Uh, pretty interesting. Seems to be a place that sells potions just based on the jars behind him and uh, that nice little uh, sign he has there. So pretty interesting that we have uh, the Deku are in this game. Uh, next up, this is kind of cool. So what we're seeing here, if you look over to the left, is a Gerudo. Uh, that Gerudo, interesting about that, Gerudo have last appeared in a top-down Zelda game in Four Swords Adventures. They don't appear in top-down Zelda games hardly ever, but here we go. Gerudo are in a top-down Zelda game. Pretty, pretty fascinating. Next up, this is just a really cool scene. You guys have probably already debated this. This is the very first time that we have seen the ocean Zoras and the river Zoras actually interact together. They have been in the same game one other time. I believe it was Oracle of Ages, but they didn't actually cross interact with each other. This is the first time we're seeing very clearly the River Zoras and Ocean Zoras are interacting together. It's possible they've always existed together, but just remained separate, but it doesn't really matter. Here we see that they are interacting and this interaction has a lot of people wondering what the hell is going on. Next up, we see the box art here. This is obviously the Peggy box art, but the US box art is pretty much the same, just substituted in the ESRB rating instead. Looks utterly incredible. Unfortunately, this giant official art, they haven't released it yet without all of the labels and stuff on it yet. So when we do get our hands on it, I'll be sure to at least post a community post about it so you guys can go ahead and download that if you want for desktop backgrounds and stuff, the full size. But anyways, uh, just some cool, cool little art. I love it. It looks great. Next up, this is where we see that water ability, the cube ability, and we notice you can surface and dive in it. I wonder if this does mean that we can get into the rivers and lakes and also surface and dive in those as well. Uh, so I find this to be pretty cool. What's, what I always felt funny about these water blocks, it just really reminds me of Minecraft, right? It's like, oh, look, we can make a block of water like Minecraft. Okay. Uh, but hey, 
Puzzle solving ability, pretty cool. You also get a good look at what the mini map's going to be like in this game down in the bottom right corner. Uh, this mini map, by the way, the only seems to be active when you're not using your ability. You'll see that in a little bit. And we obviously have a new character over there on the right uh, edge. What his purpose is, why he's wearing seemingly the top of a nut on his head. I don't know, but it is kind of fascinating. Uh, next up here is you'll see the mini map here. Um, again, down in the bottom right. So this seems to be a bit more in the world itself. And that thing that she spawned there that she put out there seems to be either um, a redead or a Gibdo of some type. You can see it's kind of freezing all the Bokoblin there in place uh, or Bokoblins, whatever you want to call them. So it's it very, very fascinating. Just some stuff to point out. Uh, here we obviously see using the piranha plant. These are like Deku plants or something. I'm really sorry that I'm forgetting the name of them. But anyways, it's it's acting like a piranha plant. It's, it's whatever. It's pretty cool. I like what it's doing. It's attacking the birds. That's where she dropped the meat uh, to distract them, which you'll see here. There's the meat she put down to draw the birds in. Using that wisdom, right, to, to outsmart the enemy so they don't attack me, and then I take you out. What's interesting as well is obviously you notice at the top, right, the why. The why is whatever your currently active thing is that you're doing and then you'll see the d-pad here off to the uh, left uh, right underneath the hearts uh, that might be where you can get your quick selection menu up and stuff like that so uh, we'll see what's up with that here is really cool i like this one we have a, a few screenshots of this uh, what i like about this is it's showing the multi multi-facet gameplay there's going to be uh, this is like a throwback to zelda 2 zelda 2 had all these side scrolling dungeon sections and i don't know if this is a dungeon maybe it is but this is a, like a really big throwback vibes here to zelda 2 dungeon designs going side scrolling obviously you know the screenshots here are just showing that you spawn the spider who, who climb down the web we saw that in the footage um, and then it allows you to traverse how you get across that gap there i don't know maybe you can do longer jumps but whatever it is i'm very excited uh that we have this side scrolling aspect coming back and this potentially again could be how dungeons are tackled in the game because that's exactly how it worked in zelda 2. uh we go over here we see a fire area and you're gliding along with one of the birds in the game we've been able to do that obviously in the past with things like the cuckoos obviously and tears of the kingdom breath of the wild we had the paraglider stuff as well so really cool to see this back and in, in, in use and you can see all those like uh, hot air vents pushing up I'm assuming that pushes you higher when you go over them uh, just pretty neat. Notice while you're doing this action, there is no mini map or hearts on screen here. Uh, so kind of fascinating that's, that they kind of clear off the screen so you can really see where you're going. Next over here, we see an underwater area. Again, side scrolling again. I mean, it might remind you a bit of Mario or something spawning the fish to go attack. But this could, again, just be a water dungeon. Uh, and I believe that meter that's next to her head, I think that's a breathing meter. Uh, I believe because we saw that again when you were going up the water column. So I believe that's just how long you can stay underwater without needing air. So I'm, I'm presuming there's air bubbles underwater you can run into. Or maybe uh, there's a surface where you can go up and get some air. I have no idea, obviously, because we don't see it in action in the trailer. Here is where you see that she's spawning out the bokoblins and stuff like that. They're doing their thing, uh, taking out enemies. Pretty awesome. Uh, here you go where she picked up the ability to get the bokoblins. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, here you see the stacking of beds. Uh, definitely not a physics-based engine because physics-wise, those beds are in the water, but that's okay. Physics can stay with uh, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. I just love these abilities and the, and the puzzle solving stuff they bring up. This could be a dungeon area as well, potentially, or just outside of a dungeon, or maybe there's sections of dungeons that are side-scrolling, sections that aren't. Uh, this, to me, is one of the most dungeon-y feeling areas we've seen so far. Uh, so pretty cool. Really liking what we're seeing. And then over here again, we're just getting another look right before the earlier image. Uh, she was already down in front of the house. This time she's up on the wall. Saw this in the trailer. Here we go. Seeing some other, more puzzle solving ability, Put you know, putting the tree to block the air gust so you can get by. Obviously before she did the uh, wooden block or the wooden crate which is now down there in the bottom right corner because the air was blocked temporarily but it couldn't hold it and it got pushed down um you're seeing her spawn it right there and there's where i'm talking about that wooden crate that ends up on the ground so pretty cool uh here's where you get the bed ability and you see hey up in the top right corner a pot uh we didn't see her use the pot for anything but you can make pots 
find that fascinating considering that Link's always breaking them for rupees. So kind of cool. Uh, here you go seeing that early ability of stacking those tables so you can end up climbing up the wall and stuff like that. Pretty interesting. And again, one thing you'll notice, while she's spawning that table, there is no mini map or hearts on screen. Everything kind of goes away when you're in the middle of spawning something. I find that just to be a really interesting uh, thing to pay attention to. Um, and then as you see, here she is. She didn't spawn the stuff, so she got the hearts on the right. She's got her, you know, staff ability and whatever those D-pad buttons are. The, the Y ability up there above and then the mini map down in the bottom right corner so again we're just seeing that there is definitely some differences going on here uh, here you go where she learns the table ability like we saw in the trailer we got some jars in the background all of that here we go where she gets the staff and that fairy uh, so that's pretty cool in jail by the way which I find fascinating why is Zelda in jail I don't know if anyone's asked this question Zelda escapes and now she's in jail why is she in jail Maybe she's outside of the, 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 the no, 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 that, that's definitely in the cell. Why is she in a jail cell? Isn't she Princess Zelda of Hyrule? Aren't we in Hyrule? I'm really confused on what's going on and why she's in jail, but hey, uh, I'm sure it'll be explained in the story somehow. Anyways, uh, yeah, and then we just come back around. So uh, then, then we come uh, with a screenshot we already saw, but then we get to this one where Zelda's outside laying on the ground. Uh, what I kind of find interesting is there's like reflections or something going on in that purple stuff. So you're seeing like those islands that kind of look like they're floating, or maybe that's another dimension. Like obviously everyone went somewhere. I don't think they died. So maybe that's like you're appearing into another dimension that is like floating islands. Do we ever go to that dimension? And then there's... Uh, link falling through again. So that kind of does it for all of the screenshots that have been officially released. Pretty fascinating. But one thing I like to draw attention to is this image here. Uh, this image was um, posted over on the Zelda Reddit. And again, this gets back to that, that wide angle thing. What they're trying to show here is it looks like, it literally really looks like that this game is built in the world of A Link to the Past. Now, everything isn't perfectly lined up. Death Mountain as an example, is not in the correct location for A Link to the Past, but there's just a lot of things that are lining up. They very clearly reused a lot of things from the world of A Link to the Past, but there could be some, some differences and some changes to Hyrule. I'm very curious at those differences and changes. Uh, not bad to be based on A Link to the Past. Also, that kind of can go into... Um, supporting the idea that maybe this is the game that begins the fallen timeline for people that are really, really into timeline theories. I think a lot of this is actually starting to line up a bit and it be in the world of a link to the past, or at least a version of that world, uh, actually goes to support that. So I think that's actually a pretty cool detail to, to consider. Also, um, there's this thing where there's the official art and then there's the game. And for some reason, I don't know what's going on, but the sword designs are slightly different. In the game is what you're seeing on the right. And in there, you see that it's kind of angled up like a diamond shape coming out from the hilt. But then if you look at the official art, it's actually flat I, on one side. I don't, like, I don't know what this means. Like, it's a completely different design, basically. I don't really know if this means anything or if Link gets different or if we control Link for part of the game? Is it possible that we actually play as Link at some point? Like, What if we can go to the other dimension and in that other dimension we play as Link? Maybe we play as Zelda and Link. I have no idea, but he definitely has two different swords here. So I don't know, man. I, it could just be one of those quirky artistic takes and it really doesn't mean anything, but in Zelda, usually that's not the case. Usually it means something. So Link can have different swords. I don't know. It's just, I'm just throwing that out there is it is something that uh, exists and we have noticed. Um, and this is like their official Japanese website. Um, this is the that official art, by the way, without the background. Um, so there you go. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's a kind of a look, a deeper look here at this game, you know, echoes of wisdom, by the way, it's not called echoes of wisdom in Japan. Like the translation here works out the wisdom of the stranger. Uh, I've actually seen this translated like four different ways. Uh, we'll just go with the official English translation because there seems to be some confusion over what it's called in Japan, but either way, it all has to do with wisdom. So you guys take that for what you will. Um, I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. I really hope you guys enjoy 
uh, this coverage. We're going to be deep diving even more as more and more news keeps coming out. We're going to keep you updated on all the footage, official website launches, new information, and all of that on this game, just like we are for the game we did before this video in Metroid Prime 4. You guys are awesome, and we'll catch you in the next one.